Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. I'm excited for my guest today, Alex Lundgren. She is a financial advisor. I call her her (laughs) her financial wizard. I have the blessing of being in a very small group of women that hold each other accountable. And Alex is one of my accountability partners. And she's also just this amazing mom and business owner and has been in the financial industry for a very long time. And I'm looking forward to her sharing her story with all of you today. (laughs) Okay. So I'm here with my friend, Alex, and Alex is actually my accountability partner. We have a high performing women's group that we get to hold hold each other accountable on a monthly basis. So thank you for doing this for me. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I would love it if you would start out talking about how you ended up in financial services, if that's even the way I say it, because I feel yeah. like you're very high level financial. So <laughs> talk, it's, an, it's talk. an evolution. Yeah. yeah. So um, there was a point in my life where I decided I didn't want to work nights and weekends anymore. Um, and the way you do that is you get out of retail and I went to a bank. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm old enough that at that point there was no Saturday banking. There was no in the grocery stores. So I knew I wasn't going to work nights and weekends. Um, and then just through the progression of different positions and jobs, I ended up in what's called a trust department with Mm -hmm. working with businesses and their financial situations and their plans. Um, Fell in love with it and just kept going and have worked several different places over the years before I got to my home. Mm -hmm. So when you say that you went several different places, because I I think it's really interesting for our listener base, which is um, people aspiring to six figures, obviously, or women that would be kind of our counterparts listen in as well. So when you say that you went through different positions, will you talk about that? Because I think yeah. sometimes what happens with anyone really is they look at someone like you who's insanely successful and they think, oh, you have to get lucky or, oh, she was just she knew she was going to do this or, right. They almost act like you just stepped into what you are today. Oh, not even close. Instead of all of the (laughs) progression that happens. So we talk about that. Well, so when I was still in the banking world, um, in 94, so this didn't happen overnight, right. Um, on the floor next to us was the institutional investing department. And so they did the investments for that whole area. Um, they were charged with it and we just handled the relationships Mm -hmm. and, at that time, there was no Yahoo Finance. There was no any of those things. You just, you had to pay for special mas- machines to give you that information and that stuff. And I had so much fun over there that the guys, and it was all guys, um, took me, literally took me under their wing and said, we'll teach you anything you want to know. Brought in old college textbooks. I mean, and just kind of, they just mentored me in that information area. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to move into that department, Mm -hmm. but I learned the information. And what that did is that put me in a position to when the banks went through all of their consolidation and I was in my third buyout at the same job, Wow! right? Um, And still had a job, which was not everybody. So I was very fortunate. I decided I'd had enough. And because of a client who was interviewing somebody else to do some of the work outside banking because they'd gotten tired of being forced through changes, Mm -hmm. um, said, we like your product. We want this person. Give him my card. And he called me. And we ended up working together for almost 15 years. And then I decided I wanted to come out of working so much with companies' retirement plans and work more with the individuals. Mm -hmm. Because my favorite part was when you get to sit down with a person And talk to them, and they've never talked to a financial person before because they don't think they can, and they don't know what to ask even. So it was, that's when it's fun. That's Mm -hmm. when you get to change people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. So I went to another firm to do more of that focus, um, dealt with more, 
I'm going to try and use really kind words here, but <laughs> dealt with a greater level of misogyny than I've ever dealt with in this industry. And this is a very male dominated industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but this firm as an advisor, I wasn't invited in with the guys because they were all guys. I shouldn't be an advisor as a woman. Interesting. I didn't go with the staff because I wasn't staff, mm-hmm. right? I mean, when there were things, I just never fit. Yeah. Um, I was one of their top earners and producers. I qualified for national trips and I didn't fit. Yeah. Um, you just weren't in the right place. No, nope, I was not in the right place, but it gave me some great knowledge, mm-hmm. um, some really good experience in another part of the industry I hadn't been in. And it provided me the opportunity to actually meet my current business partner who does things the right way because it's the right way to do them, which is how I always operate it. Mm-hmm. But then I'd sit in these sales meetings at the beginning of every month and they'd want you to make goals. And I'd be like, I can't tell you how many life insurance policies I'm going to sell. I haven't met people yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not how I operate. It's, it's not true to me. So I couldn't do it. And they all knew it. And they just, I made stuff up and they all just let me because they couldn't change me. And they knew that and they were happy with the numbers. Mm-hmm. And then I just found the right place to be. So let's talk about two pieces of that story. I didn't know that you had gone through three acquisitions. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting one, mainly because for anyone that hasn't ever been through an acquisition, there's so much change. Mm -hmm. And you don't think that from the outside looking in. I went through two acquisitions in pharma, but it completely changes the dynamic of a company and the culture and the way that people function and a lot of times who they report to. There's so many pieces to it. And I think that in today's day and age, that kind of constant change is happening more rapidly. Absolutely. So will you talk about how you handled that and what did you do to adjust? Because I think that that's something, that's a skill set, obviously, that you had in a few places um, that really benefited you. Yeah. Well, I I very early on um, decided to never look at change as bad. Mm-hmm. Change is just change. That's just it. That's powerful. It is. And it because it serves me in a lot of places. Um, so change is, is neutral and I get to decide if it's good or bad and how I handle it. And that is a huge survivor skill in some of those transitions because you think everything's set even after they've come in and made changes. And then suddenly three weeks later, here's another one that's rolling out. You didn't know was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and it also helped me in the interactions with my clients to frame it differently, to help them be like, okay, yes, we're doing these things, but I'm going to make it smooth as I can. We're in it together. Um, And that helps a lot. I didn't even think about that in terms of your clients going through that and you having to really hold them up and keep them comfortable, probably still trusting, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. As everything, all of their stuff changed, right? I mean, they had to fill out new paperwork every time, just like they'd moved their accounts and they hadn't. Mm -hmm. So, and we got to learn new systems. And I mean, it's just, it's a lot of stuff, um, but it really is about how you take it in and approach it um, and giving people a chance because I think that the worst thing you can do is say the reason we do something is because that's how we've always done it. Mm-hmm. It's not a valid reason. Um, and it, you have to just step out of it yeah. and see, maybe it'll be better. Maybe it won't, but I may not have a choice. So yeah. I and either be okay way you learn yeah. if you want to. Right. Yeah. The resiliency is huge, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. So you transitioned into owning your own business. Yeah. And what was that like? Because you obviously, you had worked for a corporation for a very long time. And talk about that shift. So I did get a little bit of an intro to it in between. So the time that I was at a place before, I was, um, all of my income was self Generated. Yeah. Okay. So it was independent. Not quite the same as having other people you're responsible for. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd always said I wouldn't ever do that. And in fact, I always said I didn't ever want to be in management again because I don't want to be, you know, I'm really good at motivating myself. Uh, <laughs> Being a mom's hard enough, right? I don't want people who are other people's Amen. kids. Um, and and quite honestly, I still really don't play a management role in this firm. And um we have a great, we have a couple of really great people at that. And it doesn't have to be me, which I love. Mm-hmm. But so you I hired well. Yes. I hired people that want to do that and do that well. Um, 
But when the opportunity came to really put my money where my mouth is with regards to something that I love and that I'm invested in and that I have every intention of being at until I decide I don't want to work anymore, mm-hmm. it just made sense. Yeah. It just made sense. That's an interesting skill set, though, because I do think sometimes a lot of especially younger entrepreneurs feel like they have to do everything mm-hmm. instead of hiring out. So your wisdom, actually, in hiring someone to do the thing that maybe wasn't necessarily your best skill set or right. just something you didn't want to do, I think is really powerful. Well, and I think I'm fortunate and I've learned that from business owners through the years. So mm-hmm. in having always worked with business owners in this industry at some level, I've seen some incredible businesses fail because they're poorly run because the the idea, the creator can't let go. Mm-hmm. And they're the visionary. They're not the day-to-day person, yeah. right? Um, and I've had several business owners, when you talk about what made you successful, you hire pe- people smarter than yourself mm-hmm. who see your vision and want to implement it. And you know, they know what they're talking about. I'd yeah. be dumb not to listen to them. So that leads me to, you know, there's some questions that yeah. I was going <laughs> to So do you remember when you achieved six figures and how that felt for you? I remember when it clicked. One time I was sitting down and I was running some projections and I went, wait, no, wait, back up. And I ran them again because I was sure I'd messed up. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it was pretty, um, it kind of took my breath away because it was one of those things that I didn't realize it was actually happening. It had always been an out there. Mm-hmm. That's my goal, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you hit that goal, you're like, what? I did it. I can't believe I did this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I think it shocked me, honestly. Um, and I had to rerun numbers a couple of times <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, but what if this hap- this terrible thing happens? Will I still make it, right? You know, what if this client suddenly decides they hate us after eight mm-hmm. years, right? And that, you know, what those types of things. Um, but it was it was really exciting. And I was like, okay, all of that was worth it. And I I can hit goals. Mm-hmm. The big ones. Yeah. So such a cool thing, right? Yeah. yeah. It really was. And I think it's important to celebrate when you hit those goals because it's so easy to be like, okay, now what's next? Mm -hmm. Sit in it for a little bit and enjoy it. Yeah. Kind of relish it. Yeah. 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 It doesn't happen overnight. Enjoy it. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So book or podcast? So I have two books. Okay. Um, I have one that just because I think every woman should know financial stuff. I think it's really important. I'm pretty passionate about that. the average age of a widow is 55. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I did not realize Yeah, that. it's pretty young, um, which means there's younger and older, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 98% of women will run all of the financial picture at some point in their life, whether it's for themselves or their parents. So it's really important to know this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the better educated you are, the better consumer you are. So there is a book called Smart Women Finish First by David Bach. It's incredible. Okay. It's not a difficult read. It's written in normal English. It explains terms and, you know, do you need life insurance? Why would you need life insurance? What kind? All the different kinds, all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just really good information, even if you're just looking up a topic real quick. As far as one that I think was super valuable for me from a business standpoint, it's called The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women. It's by Valerie Young, and it's all about the imposter syndrome. Oh, interesting. And self-confidence and um, how we attribute so much of our success to you were lucky, mm-hmm. right? You, the right person found you, whatever. No, you had to be in that position. You had to have the knowledge. You had to step out and take the action and do things and giving ourselves some credit for it mm-hmm. and learning how to overcome a lot of that. Um, and it's even a good one to just go back to. Everyone's, yeah. you know, you hit a new level and you start to question again, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a really good business one, I think. And then the last question, the mom question. The mom (laughs) question. So so you're not only an incredible business person, you're an amazing mom. So let's talk about. If you ask them, I'm not sure if they say (laughs) that. um, Yeah, I have a 22 and a 28-year-old, and I have always worked. Um, Well, I had about a year that I didn't when my youngest was little. My youngest is deaf, so there were a lot of appointments, and I did take a couple of years of breaks just 
to facilitate it all. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the most important thing that you can do if, as a working mom, two things. First of all, be okay that, with the fact that you're working. Because if that's where you want to be, that's great. Um, everybody has mom guilt when somebody's sick or something happens or they forget a paper. That's normal. Mm -hmm. And and it, it's okay you have to feel it, but don't beat yourself up. I think the other thing that I learned from my kids is find out where they want you to be. Do they care if you come to every practice for soccer or do they just want you there at the games? Mm -hmm. um, maybe you don't have to stretch yourself near as thin as you think because they don't even care if you're there. Mm -hmm. Do they care if you're the mom that takes cupcakes to the bake sale? And do they even care if they come in a plastic container, right? Bring them from the store. It's okay. Um, That's interesting. So ask. Ask your ask. kids how much, where is it important to them that you show up? Because yeah. they'll tell you. And it's not always where you think it is. That's great advice. I wish someone had given me that advice when I was younger. Yeah, it just, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll tell you where it's important. Yeah. So last question. Okay. What am I not asking that you think you've got a lot of wisdom? Um, I, I get the benefit of spending one-on-one -on -one time with you. Yeah. In a, well, in a group of a few women, but. You've got a lot of wisdom. So what am I not asking that you think could be powerful for our listeners? Um, I think if you're passionate about something and you really enjoy it, I mean, they talk about find something you love and you won't work a day in your life. Well, that's not true. I still work, right? And I don't want to go to work every day, but I do love my job when I get there. And I love the people I work with. And I, I believe that if at one o'clock on Sunday afternoon, you're dreading your next day, you've got to do something. You, you got to get out. You got to move. Um, don't, don't get stuck because you think that's just all there is, and settle. Mm -hmm. Take the, take the leaps. They're worth it. I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that as a okay. quote. Take the leaps. <laughs> They're worth it. Yeah, I always pick out a quote or two from you. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you again for your yeah. time. Thanks I for having so me. So appreciate it. Yeah, you're just a gem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.